Hi, I'm Joaquin, and this is Exploring Existing Solutions to Oil Spills. So the first solution is oil booms, which is also known as contaminant booms, and they are basically just temporary floating barriers to protect the coastlines and the shores from oil slicks, which are a direct cause from massive oil spills. And so these oil slicks are very thin layers of oil that are very hard to cont to contain, but with these temporary floating barriers, they are contained easily as a temporary solution. And so it also reduces pollution throughout coastlines, rivers, and oceans, like I said. But the origins of the oil booms are very unknown, like most of these oil solutions, because they're very widely used. So with research, I got that it was used first either through the early 1900s and the 1850s and so i think by early 1900s i got 1901 was a very common year and these oil booms are implemented by coast guards who are pretty much there to contain oil booms i mean oil spills and some problems are is it a sh it's a short-term solution for a bigger problem so these temporary these oil booms aren't that big and most of these oil spills are massive and can lead to other things like oil slicks but these floating barriers don't necessarily contain all of the problems that are are derived from these massive oil spills the second solution is oil skimmers which are Machines consisting of belts, discs, mo or mop of chains to absorb the surfaces on these on water. And the pros and cons of this are the pros are that it uses um, the recycled oil for other purposes, which is very environmentally friendly. And the cons are that they are prone to getting um, stuck. So when they are absorbing these oils, usually these machines are slowed down and they usually stop working because of the oil and they mess up these the functions of functioning of these machines. And they weren't they were created by a company called Elastec or American Marine. And they are usually the ones who are implementing these these skimmers throughout oil spill areas. And a problem with implementing it is that it only operates in smaller sections, so the machine can't really absorb all of the oil in uh, in these spills, especially if they're in more of a wide range spill, because they are just not equipped to have that um, capability or, or ability. And it was also very costly because they are machines and the functioning of these machines are definitely um, very costly because of how the machines need to interact with the water. So water protection and also just generally functioning well in long periods of time. And then solution three are dispersants, which are a very common method. And it is a chemical, chemical, compound, chemical compound sprayed on surfaces containing oil. So these chemical mixtures are being sprayed onto water surfaces usually that contain oil and these chemicals are breaking down petroleum oil into smaller droplets. So when Coast Guards and or other organizations are here to clean these oil spills up, it is much easier because they are in smaller molecules or parts. And the origins are unknown because it is a very wide use, widely used solution. And so the origins of when it started and who really made it are very unknown. And it is implemented by Coast Guards and or the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. And the, usually these two groups work simultaneously and are usually the ones who are implementing these solutions for these spills. And the use of dispersants are limited because of some because some are toxic to marine organisms. So these dispersants might work well in breaking down these oils, but they are toxic to the marine life and these organisms living obviously inside these oceans. And I know that they are toxic to things like coral. So 
the amount of times organizations can use this are very limited, seeing as it is very toxic to marine life and these organisms. And that is it. Thank you.